ministry is with us this morning, Bishop Jerome H. Ross Sr. I need not one person left in the seat. Help me celebrate this great man of God, our Father in ministry, the right Reverend Bishop Jerome H. Ross Sr., the presiding prelate of Kingdom Connection Fellowship International. We thank God for him. Amen. We thank God for him. Uh, and I thank God not only for him, but for his lovely wife, Lady Patricia Ross. Songbird and preacher in her own right. We thank God for her. Amen. I thank God for my lovely wife, Lady Tammy. To all these great preachers in the pulpit and in the pew, our deacons, our mothers, our deaconess, our trustees, our ushers, to everybody who is allowing God to use them, I say thank God for you. I want to thank God for our special guest on today, Reverend Donald Turner. He's the associate pastor of the Rome Missionary Baptist Church in Cleveland, Ohio. We thank God for him worshiping with us on today, along with his lovely wife, Judge Deborah Turner. Amen. We thank God for her. Amen. A special guest of our very own Judge Kimberly Cocroft. We thank God for your Amen. presence on today. I believe there is a word yes, from God. the Lord. If you would go with me to a very familiar passage of scripture, the first chapter of Matthew. Matthew, the first chapter, we'll be reading for our hearing verses 22 and 23. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. And let all of God's people say amen. amen. Matthew, the first chapter, verses 22 and 23. And it reads... In the King James Version, now all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. As you take your seats, I want you to encourage your neighbor and tell him God is still with us. God is still with us. The Bible tells us in John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But then the word of God tells us that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we behold his glory and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh so that wisdom, the wisdom of God, could come within our reach. For his word, the expression of the whole truth about God, is far beyond our comprehension. Because no creature can ever fully understand his creator. But the Son of God put on a humble human form so that infinite truth could be seen in finite terms. He humbled himself. He came down to the lowest level of humanity. Hebrews 2.17 tells us, therefore, it was necessary for Jesus to be in every respect like us, uh, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. He could then offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the world. You see, it was more than just a birth that we celebrate we celebrate the birth of Christ, but we also celebrate God's opportunity to be with us. I need you to see what he did to be with us. God, not bound by time, stepped into time and took on flesh to be with us. 
at the birth of Christ, God, who is unrestricted, allowed himself to be restricted within human form. For more than three decades, I need you to hear this, his once limited, limitless reach would be limited to the stretch of a human arm. For more than three decades, a God that is everywhere all the time is now slow to the cadence of human feet. We read and believe many things in the light of the incarnation, but the birth of our Lord and Savior announces and provides for us the love God truly has for us. But even in our humanness and all that we cannot understand, we can yet observe and acknowledge God's greatness. Consider the fact that Jesus will grow weary in his journey so that he can refresh us on our journey. Consider the fact that uh, Jesus in his lifetime desired a drink when he gives spiritual water to the thirsty. Consider the fact that Jesus would become hungry in his human body when he would supply food and salvation to those that hungered after righteousness. Consider the fact that Jesus was born to die again. God is great. Consider he was going to be buried in a borrowed tomb only to rise again. Consider he came to hang on a cross for us even though the cross was for us. He made the earth shake just to make it strong. He roused the sea just so he could tell it to calm down. He was born of a virgin so that we may know him as the son of God. In his birth, we see God coming in a weak and vulnerable form to do something for us that we could not do for ourselves. Find three people close to and tell them God is with us. The God who sits high but looks low chooses to share our location and our condition. God is with us. In the death of Jesus, we see God present and suffering in a human form. God chooses to take part instead of being our enemy. In other words, God is for us. In the resurrection and the ascension, we see God in victorious human form. In this form, insinuating himself into the depths of our very being. In other words, God is in us as the spirit of Christ. I don't think you caught that. Let me say it another way. God, by his grace, through his pardon, declares that God is for us. By grace, because of his power, declares that God is in us. By grace, because of his son, Jesus Christ, he promised and declared that he would be with us. And by his grace, I'm here to tell you today that God is with us. Do me a favor. Tell somebody in close proximity that if nobody else is with you, God is with you. Oh, listen, that's good news for somebody because if your family's not with you, God is with you. If your friends are not with you, God is with you. And by the grace of God, he said, I'll never leave you. I wish I had somebody in here. Nor forsake you. Can I tell somebody in this room, you've experienced loss on this year. You've experienced disappointment on this year. But the good news is that God was with you through every loss and every disappointment. Oh, God was with you then. He's with you now. And the shout is God promised that he will continue to be with you. I need somebody to help me preach this and encourage somebody close to you. Find you a neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about your year, but there's some things I could have left out of this year. But the fact that God was with me, I made it to the end of the year. Oh, 
Oh, no, I need somebody to give God a praise right through there. Because if the devil had his way, you wouldn't be here right now. But do me a favor, let the devil know that God was with me. God, God was with me. And he's promised that he will be with us as we move forward. Little did you know that when Mary struggled and pushed her way through delivery, that baby then will come forth and deliver you from what you struggled with. He came to help us push through what we seem to not be able to get through. Oh, the Bible says, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Oh, listen, I'm going to help you because if somebody wants to ask you how you made it, Don't waste your time trying to explain it. If somebody wants to question how you got to where you are, don't feel like you have the need to have to explain why you deserve what you got. Because the truth is, we don't deserve anything that we have. But do me a favor, tell three people and tell them, God, help me. God was with me. Tell them God made it happen. It wasn't my bank account, but God made it happen. It wasn't my education, but God made it happen. Watch this. It wasn't my tithes and offering. God made it happen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That if I believe in him, I should not perish, but have everlasting life. His name is Emmanuel. Through the thick and thin, God has been with me. Through hell and high water, God has been with me. Through his birth, watch this, I gained a life partner. That went right over somebody's head. I said, through his birth. I gained a life partner. I know we done redefined life partner today, but I'm here to tell you I got a life partner. Oh, listen, some of y'all looking at me. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, which means he was here even before the beginning even started. I'm about to mess up somebody's theology. The beginning didn't start at his birth. The beginning did not start at his birth. The beginning did not start with Genesis 1 and 1. But be before Genesis 1 and 1, he was already here. But look what he did for you. He came through the natural process so that he can be with you. In other words, I was here before you knew I was here. And now that you know I'm here, I'm going to stay with you. Oh, listen. Watch this, and then he made a vow. He said that he will be with me, which means he will love me. He will comfort me. He honors me. He keeps me in sickness and in health, forsaking all others. He keeps himself faithful to me. Do me a favor. Just shout Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means God is with us. I don't think you understand. When you just shouted Emmanuel, you just declared and let the enemy know that God is still with me. Oh, uh, listen, listen, oh, uh, listen. Uh, God is with us because uh, when, because he, he, he emptied himself. When he emptied himself, he emptied himself so that we can be filled. When his body was broken, he, his body was broken so that way we can be made whole. Uh, when his blood was shed, his blood was shed so your sins could be forgiven. Uh, when he... When he submitted to injustice, he did it so that way you can be forgiven. He came to finish his father's work so that way you can have life. And it all started when he was born. When he is with us. I got three things I want to share with you. I got three benefits of Christ's birth. 
and then we'll let you go. We're going to let the Lord have his way. He's already having his way in this place. But listen, I'm going to get out the way. First of all, because Christ was born, you're now a recipient of his promise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To truly understand the promise, we have to go back to the fall. I think I mentioned this before. In Genesis, after creation, we experience what? The fall. And it was after the fall that the promise and plan of redemption was initiated. Watch what happened. Adam and Eve ate the apple. Then the Lord gives attention to the instigator, the provoker, the troublemaker. Let me say it this way. They made a mistake, and before he dealt with them, he dealt with the one that caused the fall. He said, so the Lord, here's the Bible says, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed you are above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. What does that have to do with the birth of Jesus Christ? Let me tell you, when the Lord plans to redeem you, when the Lord plans to redeem you, he will first take care of your enemy. Okay, let me say it this way. Before the Lord sets you free, he's going to deal with everything that locks you up. Oh, I don't have nobody in here. I don't think you see it. God witnessed the fall, but he already had a redeemer in mind. He knew what the devil introduced into existence could not be taken back, so God prepared a plan. His plan was to provide us with a redeemer that would veto every plot that the enemy orchestrated in your life. For God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that through the, the world through him might be saved. God's love caused him to provide a savior for sinners. I'm not going to get a whole lot of amens and shouts on this one. But if I got anybody in here that knows that you were a sinner, I, I, listen, I'm not offended. I knew I wouldn't get a whole lot right there. If you knew that you were a sinner, but you can stand today to say I was a sinner saved by. I want to know if there's anybody in here that can take at least the next 12 seconds to tell God thank you that you were once a sinner, but now you are a sinner saved by. If you ain't done nothing, you don't have too much to say. But if I got some people in here that got the testimony, amazing great. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. Oh, uh, do I have anybody in here that was lost? I said, do I have anybody in here that was lost? Do me a favor, that was me one time. But now I'm found. I was blind. Tell somebody, now I'm going into 2020. Oh, y'all missed that. I was blind, but now I see. Do me a favor, do me a favor, do me a favor. Tap three people and tell, tell your neighbor, I see that God's been with me all the days of my life. Oh no, come on, talk to somebody and tell them, I see God has been with me all the days of my life. In the good times, he was with me. In the bad times, he was with me. In my depressed times, he was with me. Somebody shout, he was with me. He was with me. He was with me. The Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
And if I got any safe folk in the house, just do me a favor. Just give God a praise because you saved today. I appreciate all eight of you. But if I got any saved folk in the building, do me a favor, give God a praise. I don't think you understand what that means. Let me say it this way. If the Lord snatched you out of the hand of the enemy, you owe God a praise. Listen, listen, listen. His birth served as an announcement that the word had become flesh and that your redeemer was here. Uh, his birth was the announcement that hope is now available to you. His birth was the announcement that your healer is here. His birth was the announcement that your deliverer is now among you. Listen, I, I was talking to our young people. Excuse my tardiness, but I wanted to spend some time with our young people in their youth service. So we talked about the greatest gift that God has ever given to us. And, the, and, and there's a verse of scripture that we really don't attach to the Christmas story, Bishop, but I found it interesting, and the Lord gave it to me, so I shared it with them. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is, y'all missed it already. Uh, in another translation, it says, for the wages, the pavement of doing wrong is death. Which means, even if you're doing wrong, you're going to get paid. There's one thing that's for sure. Everybody in this room about to get paid. Tap your neighbor, wake him up, and tell him it doesn't matter if you're doing right or wrong. You're going to get payment. The wages, the payment of not doing right, watch this is the loss of life. Y'all missed that. I told the young people, I said I could push the point and start talking about hell, but I ain't going to do that because I want y'all to go to sleep tonight. I said, but when you consider the wages of sin is death, what it's saying is you keep living the way you want to live, you're not going to have life the way you want to have it. But here's my point. As we go into Christmas next week, uh, the Bible says, but the free gift of God. Y'all missed that. The free gift of God is eternal life. In other words, you don't have to pay for this gift. You don't have to work for this gift. There's no ways that you can earn for this gift. Do me a favor, talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you picked up the gift? Uh, let me get back to my text. Let me get back to my text. The Bible says the real gift of Christmas is that he came that you might have life. That was the whole point, that you might have it more abundantly. Somebody ought to give God praise because this promise of life is available. His promise was to fulfill. Why now watch this, the birth of Christ confirms for us that God is a problem solver. I could run out this sanctuary all the way down to Fifth Avenue and come back right about now. I said, God is a problem solver. That don't mean nothing if you ain't never had a problem. And if you like me, you got problems. But the good news is that God is a problem solver. Oh, since procreation began, we are in need of a problem to be solved, and we weren't able, capable, or qualified to solve the problem we had. So watch this. God provides a miracle to solve our problem. I wonder if there's anybody in here that can testify that God still performs miracles. Man, 
man, listen, I, I, Mom, Bessie, I was kind of, I was mighty weak. I, maybe y'all just said that y'all seen God has been with you all of your life. You, you just said that you've seen that God has been with you all of your days. Do me a favor, talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want to see a miracle, you don't have to look any further than me. How many know that your life is a testament in a miracle all by itself? Okay, okay, let me define it for you because maybe you, don't, you can't get with it because you don't understand it. A miracle is when something is performed on the behalf of somebody that doesn't have the resources, capability, or able to do it for themselves. Some of y'all didn't get it. In other words, some of us have been placed in some situations we couldn't get ourselves out of. Y'all missed it. I said we placed ourselves into some situations we couldn't get ourselves out of. Okay, okay, okay. Some of us have been sick and didn't know where the sickness came from. And I'm not trying to minimize anybody's sickness, but I ain't talking about a headache. I ain't talking about a common cold that you can get something over the counter to help assist you to get well. I'm talking about a sickness that doctors don't even know how they gonna work at. I'm talking about somebody been in a situation that got doctors baffled, that have Medicine baffled that has people trained baffled. Oh, do me a favor. Do me a favor. If that's you, do me a favor. Just lift your hands up. Just lift your hands up. If you got that testimony, now look around this room and do me a favor. Tell somebody God is still a miracle worker. I'm trying to move on. But every time I look around this room and see all these miracles in this building, I got to pause to give God some praise. Because truly, if it had not been, I said, if it had not been for the Lord, hold outside. Can I say something? Some of y'all would not be sitting in this pew today. Uh, I'm about to say something. I hope it don't start no trouble because I got to finish this message. I got to finish this message. But I'm going to say something. Some of y'all should have been laying down front this year. Some of you should have had plans prepared for you. Marlon, I'm about to say something deep. I hope you don't get offended. But God took some business away from you this year. Maybe y'all knew y'all know what Deacon Gary does. He's in the business and putting dead things in the ground. And God just said that he took some business away from him. In other words, some of you should have been. But if I got any grateful people in here. Just give three people a high five and tell them it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't my time. God said not so. God said this is not unto death. But you will have life. All I'm trying to tell you, because God is with us, what should have happened couldn't happen. I said, because he's with us, what should have happened? What was supposed to take you out of here couldn't take you out of here because God was with you. Oh, find your neighbor, take your neighbor by the hand. I want to shake your neighbor's hand like you're about to shake it off. I want you to shake your neighbor's hand like you're about to shake it off.
Talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, every problem I had, God solved it. Every sickness that I had, God healed it. Every burden that I had, God lifted it. Can I remind you that God specializes? Oh, listen. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready to find you another neighbor. Because that wasn't the right neighbor. Find you another neighbor and say, neighbor, I found a solution to all of my problems. And my solution has a name. And that name is Jesus. Somebody give God a praise. Because Mary's baby, Jesus, born in a manger, Jesus. Oh, I got to get back to my seat. I got to get back to my seat, but I got one more thing I need to share with you. The Bible says all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Oh, I got to go. I got to go because y'all sick of me right here. But I, I got a feeling and a suspicion that we made it all year because his name was Emmanuel. I got a feeling that some of you are looking at me today and I can see you because the prophet's word came to fruition. Because he's with us, we're still here. Because he's with us, we're still here. But here's the shout, Bishop Ross. I got a feeling that because he's Emmanuel, he will be with us next year. Uh -oh. His name will still be Ah. Uh, his name is a man which literally we're saying, I believe in his name. I believe he'll be with me. When you understand that God is with you, what can stop you? Because if God be If God be for you, if God be with you, who can be against you? If God is around you, what can get to you? If God is under you, what could sneak up on you? In other words, if God is with you, you cannot lose. All right, there, there, here, here's the here's the here's the shout. I'm going to my seat because he's with you. There's nothing that's off limits to you. Because he's with you, there's nothing off limits to you. Because the last time I read it, it says, "My father is rich." in houses and lands, which means I should be broke, but I ain't broke. I just, I just, all my English teachers just cringed. But do me a favor, talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, what I should be, I'm not, because God is with me. No, that wasn't the right neighbor. I need somebody else to do me a favor. Find you another neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm standing on my own two feet because God is with me. No, that still wasn't the right neighbor. Find you another neighbor. Do me a favor. Find you a neighbor that don't mind getting up on their feet and find them and tell them, say, neighbor, I owe God a praise because I don't know where I would be 
If it had not been for God being with me, oh no, do me a favor, we gotta find one more neighbor. One last time, take your neighbor by the hand. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. And say, neighbor, I don't look like what I've been through because God has been with me. I know you don't want to talk to your neighbor anymore. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna ask you to talk to yourself for a minute. I want you to just take a moment of reflection. I need I need you to do me a favor. I, I need you listen, take it seriously, do me a favor. I need you to look back on the day that you thought you weren't gonna make it. No, this ain't about your neighbor. Don't look at them. I want you to think back to the day. Think back to the moment where you said that you were gonna end this on your own. I need somebody to, I need somebody to think back to the moment where you said I quit church and I quit God. I, I need you to take a minute to yourself because there's some stuff you ain't told nobody. Some of y'all run your mouth so much, but there's some stuff you kept to yourself that you didn't want nobody else to know anything about. Do me a favor, get that in your mind. Some of you had a date, some of you had a time, some of you know where you were, some of you know who you were with when you said I'm done. I want you to get that moment in your head, and then I want you to say one thing to yourself. I'm still here. Now, let me tell you why you're still here. I done took the last 40 minutes to try to tell you. You're still here because God never left you. Everybody, stand to your feet, we closing. Stand to your feet, we closing. Stand to your feet, we closing. But I need you to put this into practice. I need you to do this, put this into practice and I'm gonna get this mic up. I want you to do me a favor. Tell your neighbor, I'm gonna need a little room here. Come on, tell and warn them, I'm gonna need a little room. And I can't apologize for how I'm about to act. But I want you to do me a favor. I want you to just walk around and tell yourself everywhere I go, God is with me. Everywhere I go, God is with me. Every step that I take, he's with me. Every room I go into, he's with me. When I go into the doctor's office, he's with me. When I go into my bedroom, he's with me. When I go into the kitchen, he's with me. When I go to work, he's with me. Somebody shout, he's with me. Somebody shout, he's with me.
Don't y'all let her praise God by herself. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and everywhere that he's going with me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank God for staying with me. Everywhere I go, he's with me. Somebody do me a favor. What's his name? Emmanuel. What's his name? What's his name? Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. If you can, take your seats. If you can, take your seats. I'm not going to stop your praise. You go ahead and bless him. Because I wasn't there with you. But he was there with you. Oh, listen, we got to move on. We got to move on. somebody he's here right now go ahead and bless him Somebody ought to praise him because some people left you for dead. They walked past you along the side of the road. But God sent his son Jesus and he's been right there. have to we're getting ready to open the doors of the church we're getting ready to open the doors of the church but somebody needs to know today that the enemy came for you this year the enemy came for you but he could not have you because he saw somebody was with you Y'all missed that. I said he came for you. But he had to retreat and go back. Because he saw there was somebody with you. Here it is, prophetess. It's not because of what we did, but it's because of who was with us. It wasn't our title nor our position. Watch this, but it was our position in him that caused the enemy. Let 
Let me bring this to a close. The Bible says, the Bible says that if we will humble ourselves, if we will humble ourselves, do what's right, and resist the devil, the Bible says that the devil will flee from you. In other words, if you hold on to the fact and knowing that God is with you and you do what's right, the devil's going to have to back up. And I don't know about anybody else in this room, but I declare today that the devil's got to back up. And somebody's been somebody's been in a struggle you've been in a fight somebody in this room has literally been running for their life and today God is saying you can stop running if you just run to me I am with you and when you accept me, I've already been fighting for you and you didn't know it. But when you come, you have a partner that is stronger than any problem that you can have. I'm talking to somebody right now in this room that's been searching for an answer, you've been searching for a solution, you've been searching for a person to help you with the load that life has laid on your shoulders. But I invite you and I introduce you to someone who is a burden bearer, who can lighten the load. But you have to do your part, you have to come and give it to him. You have to allow him the opportunity to be in your life so he can be the head of your life. The greatest gift that we could have ever received was the gift of salvation. And it didn't come under the tree, but it came on the tree. And today, God wants you to come and pick up your gift. It's a free gift. You just need to come and get it for yourself. If you're here today, the doors of church are open. All that means is that we are stopping.